The Biolistic PDS-1000 helium system uses high-pressure helium released by a rupture disc and partial vacuum to propel a macrocarrier sheet loaded with gold or tungsten microcarriers towards target cells at high velocity. The microcarriers are coated with DNA or other biological material for transformation. The macrocarrier is halted by a stopping screen. The DNA coated microcarriers continue traveling towards the target to penetrate and transform the cells. Connect one end of the six foot tubing to the helium pressure regulator. Tighten the connection. Connect the other end to the inlet valve of the three-way helium valve assembly. Tighten the connection. Connect one end of the 2.5 foot tubing to the outlet port of the valve assembly. Tighten the connection. Connect the other end to the PDS-1000 unit. Tighten the connection. Plug the power cord of the three-way helium valve into the rear of the PDS unit. The vacuum hose assembly is already connected to the port on the rear of the unit via the clamping assembly. The free end of the vacuum hose assembly must be connected to the vacuum source. Set the distance between the rupture disc retaining cap and the microcarrier launch assembly. Release the set screw. Assemble the microcarrier launch assembly. Insert the fully assembled microcarrier launch assembly on the highest slot within the chamber. The set screw on the white plastic shelf should face outward. A quarter inch distance is recommended for initial experiments. Take the quarter inch hexagonal adjustment tool and place it into the gap. Turn the adjustable nest until the macro carrier cover lid touches the gap tool. Fix this setting by tightening the set screw. Each macro carrier is washed with isopropanol to remove static. Placed inside a macro carrier holder using the seating tool. The macro carriers, along with the stopping screens, launch assembly, and rupture disc retaining cap, can be sterilized by autoclaving. Gently resuspend the gold DNA pellet by tapping the side of the tube. Pipette and spread six microliters of the DNA coated microcarriers evenly over the central centimeter of the macrocarrier. The macrocarriers should be coated in a low humidity environment with the minimum of vibration to minimize agglutination. A suggested method is to place the macrocarrier in the holder into a petri dish containing desiccant. The ethanol should evaporate within 10 minutes and the macro carriers should be used within two hours. Switch on the unit using the on off switch on the control panel. Select a rupture disc of the desired burst pressure using sterile forceps. Briefly wet the rupture disc in isopropanol and place it in the recess of the sterile rupture disc retaining cap. 
screw the retaining cap onto the end of the gas acceleration tube. Tighten the retaining cap with the torque wrench. To use the torque wrench, insert the short end of the metal rod into an accessible hole in the retaining cap. Push the long end of the rod to the right until the stainless steel rod touches the inner surface of the black tube. Prepare the microcarrier launch assembly. Place a sterile stopping screen on the stopping screen support. Install the macro carrier holder containing the loaded macro carrier on the top rim of the fixed nest. The dried micro carriers should be facing down towards the stopping screen. Replace the macro carrier cover lid on the assembly and tighten. Place micro carrier launch assembly in the top slot inside the bombardment chamber. Place the target shelf at the desired level inside the bombardment chamber. Place the sample on the target shelf. Close and latch the chamber door. Place the prepared macro carriers with the DNA gold side facing up into the macro carrier holder. Ensure that they are in place using the seating tool. Place a stopping screen in the stopping screen holder. Fit the macro carrier holder onto the stopping screen holder. Place the rupture disc into the round recess in the top of the 7-arm gas divider. Please note that as the gas is split 7 ways, a higher PSI rupture disc is needed than used with the conventional PDS-1000. Take the upper part of the adapter and screw it onto the gas acceleration tube inside the chamber. Firmly twist the small upper ring. Tighten using the torque wrench by inserting the short end into one of the holes. Loosely screw the top of the seven arm gas divider into the parts already inserted into the chamber. Slide this macro carrier shelf assembly into the second shelf position with the seven holes of the macro carrier holder facing up. Line up the seven pressure outlets with these holes. Tighten the lower ring. Place the sample on the target shelf. Close and latch the door. If this is the first use, test fire once to fill the gas tubing with helium. Evacuate the chamber. Turn on the vacuum source. Set the vacuum switch on the main unit control panel to the vac position. Evacuate the chamber to the desired level, at least 5 inches of mercury. The fire switch on the right side of this panel will be illuminated when this minimum vacuum is achieved. When the desired vacuum level is reached, hold the vacuum at that level by quickly pressing the vacuum control switch through the middle vent position to the bottom hold position. Press and hold the fire button continuously until the rupture disc bursts and the helium pressure gauge drops to zero. A small pop will be heard when the rupture disc bursts. The helium pressure gauge on top of the unit will act as a guide, but the rupture disc used will be the pressure that is released. Release the fire button immediately to avoid wasting helium. Release the vacuum from the chamber by setting the vacuum switch to the middle vent position. Open the chamber door and remove the target cells from the chamber. Remove the microcarrier launch assembly. Unscrew the lid and remove the macrocarrier holder. 
unload and discard the macro carrier and stopping screen. Unscrew the rupture disc retaining cab from the gas acceleration tube. Remove the remains of the rupture disc. After completing all bombardments, the residual pressure needs to be released from the system. Close the main valve on the helium cylinder. Close and latch the bombardment chamber door. Draw a vacuum of at least 5 inches of mercury. Activate the fire button. This should release all of the residual helium pressure and the helium pressure gauge should read zero. If not, repeat this process. Vent any residual vacuum by setting the vacuum switch to the vent position. 